on this area unit, I want to go back to similar figures. All right, we did similar triangles a couple units, many units ago. And I just want to show you how their areas, if two figures are similar, how their areas compare. And to do this, I want to do a little activity quick. Second page, look at the second page of your notes for me. Everyone see that piece of graph paper? All right, you're going to be flipping back and forth from the first page to that graph paper because we're going to be graphing some rectangles here in a second. Uh, the first rectangle you're going to graph, we're going to call it the original rectangle. And that's going to be a three by four, a three by four rectangle right there. All right, so one side is a three units, the other side is four. And I want to know what the perimeter and area of that three by four rectangle is. So one, two, three by four, one, two, three, four. If you want to put a little O in the middle for original, that's fine. And now we're going to need from one of you is uh, what's the area, what's the perimeter of this rectangle and what's the area. Okay, so it's three by four. When you have it, when you've calculated it, what's the perimeter and what's the area of this rectangle? Let's start us off here. Gianna, what's the perimeter and area there? 14 and 12. Does that not count? It's 14. It's, it's all right. You can do homework over the weekend. That's fine. Put it away. No, it's cheating. Put it away. Sorry. Put it away. All right. Good try, though. I saw that the other day. Ready? What do you got? It's not the first time students tried that, by the way writing down all the slide transitions so you can just read them off. Slide left, slide right, page girl. Ten meals. Book. Cube. We done? Star. Yeah. We're good? I'm not even checking if it, you have all of them or not. Oh, uh, you we usually get what, 16, 17 out of this? Okay. Uh, genies. Cubes. White, fades, flip, clock, swing, curtains, stars, books, pinwheels, drop, curls, Sorry, thank you, thank you, sorry. Curl, slide right, slide left, shatter. Okay, revote, ready? You only get the ones with the twos. Good try, though. Shatters. You can only vote for the ones that have the twos, by the way. Shatters. Uh, drops. Uh, wipes. And curtains. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be drop or Promethean person. All right, ready? Drop Promethean person. Here we go. Ooh, Genie coming in on you. Genie. Genie, everybody. You didn't have flip. Yeah, you did. You didn't have spin. Oh, that, was, that was flip. Oh, I thought that was spin. No, nope, that was flip. All right, going back. Here we go. Back to business now. Now what I want is a similar rectangle for rectangle one. Now remember what similar figures meant. 
the sides are in the same ratio, all right? Sides in the same ratio. So I'll take this one for this first rectangle. It's gonna be a six by eight. Rectangle one is gonna be a six by eight and everyone see how they're similar to the original. Six to three is the same ratio as eight to four. All right, so they are indeed uh, similar to each other. So six by eight now. And that's rectangle number one. All right, so both those rectangles you have on your graph right now are similar to each other because corresponding sides are in the same ratio. Uh, how about the perimeter and area of this six by eight one when you have it? When you have it, Olivia, perimeter and area when you have it. 28, 48, good work. 28, 48. All right, let's go in the other direction. Let's get a little smaller rectangle, but still similar to the original. What do you say? Let's do a one and a half by two. One and a half by two rectangle. Oh, one and a half. Yep, deal with it. And when you have the perimeter and area for that one, let me know. There we go, Josh. Uh, take your time. That area is three. Yep, and perimeter? Uh, seven. Seven, good. All right, I'll let you guys take over this last one. What do you want my last one to be? What dimensions? So similar to the three to the four. All right, both these last two have been similar because their sides are in the same ratio. So what do you want here? Uh, here we go. Let's go, Matt. What do you want here? What do you have? 12 and 16. 12 and 16, sure. I'm sure your classmates are happy to graph that one. Yep. Well, it could have been worse, right? You could have been that kid I've had in, in years past and been like, oh, I want a 30 by 41. Haha. <laughs> All right. Good. Thank you, Matt, for not being that person. Almost, almost went that out. And when you have that calculated, perimeter and area for the 12 by 16. 12 by 16, when you have that calculated. Boom, Gabby, whenever you're ready, take your time. 56 and 192. All right, these numbers have no pattern, right? Nothing to them yet. yet. The more important table is right down below now. Now we're going to compare all the ratios, and you're going to see definitely a pattern between some of these rectangles, all right? So the first two rectangles I want you to look at are number one and the original, in that order, one to the original. First thing I'm asking for is the similarity ratio. That is a term we have used this year, a quick review. That's the ratio of two sides that correspond to each other, ratio of two corresponding sides. So if you look at rectangle one, one side is six, and the original, the corresponding side is three or we could go eight to four. What ratio am I working with there? If you reduce six to three, eight to four, those, those sides are in a ratio of? One half, I, I'm gonna go one to original, so I'm gonna go two to one there, okay? Two to one. Make Yes, everyone see where I'm getting the two to one because you're gonna have to do that two more times here in a minute. Keep going across though. Look at their perimeters now. The perimeter of, of rectangle one to the original is in a ratio of 28 to 14, also known as what? 28 to 14 reduces down to? Two to one. Oh, oh, maybe we got something there. Now look at the areas. Rectangle one to the original, 48 and 12. That won't be two to one, that'll be what instead? Four to one. 
for those areas. Four to one. All right, maybe I'm starting to see something. Let's keep doing this, though. Everyone go to rectangle two in the original, please. Rectangle two in the original. What's the ratio of their sides in this case? Two to one to five, one point five over three or two over four reduces down to one to two. Now do the perimeters in that order. Two to the original. What do you notice there? The ratio of their perimeters is also one to two. And now what about the areas? 3 to 12, also 1 to, not 2, but 4. All right, now go ahead and do it for 3 to the original. Go right across, 3 to the original. Did you find their similarity ratio? The ratio of their sides is four to one and their perimeters was also four to one. But what happened when you got to areas? What'd you get there? Should have been 16 to one, the ratio of their areas. All right, take a look at the table now. Now it's filled in. We definitely have a couple things we notice. So I wanna do this in words. How do the ratios of the perimeters and areas compare with my similarity ratio? Let me start with perimeters first. The perimeter ratio. I'm not putting any. How's it compare to the similarity? Every single time. How does the perimeter ratio compare to the similarity? Every single time. Well, they're always equal. There you go. You know the similarity ratio, the ratio of two sides. Hey, everyone, you know the perimeter ratio. All right, you know the perimeter ratio. Always equal. Uh, and it also asks us about the area, though. Ooh, we're going to have to get a little mathy here. The area ratio. How does it compare to the similarity? Here's what I'm asking. Hey, look, how am I going from here to here? Here to here, here to here. Because me doing this is not true, right? They're not equal. But how can I use the similarity ratio to get to the area ratio? What's it look like? And it got anything, Z? Square. square it, right? Everyone, square both numbers, you get the ratios, the area ratio. Good. So, similarity ratio squared That's the similarity ratio squared we just wrote this in words now let's make this official and put it in some notation now here we go first thing we just put in the words i'm going to write s1 over s2 what do i mean with s1 over s2 Two sides of corresponding figures, all right? Two, so two corresponding sides of similar figures. So S, I'm going to put sides. And what did we just find out? If you know the sides, you also know the what ratio? Perimeters, P1 over P2. And again, the subscript of 1 and 2 represents two different figures. Two different figures, so P for perimeter. And then the second thing we just put in the words, oh, whoa, whoa. if I know the side ratio again, you can get to the area ratio, but that's incorrect. Right, sides and area are not not ever equal to each other. Only if you do what to the sides again? Square them. So that's what I want to put here. Squared. And I also just want to make a quick honors point here. 
it kind of makes sense that it gets squared and nothing else because anytime I have you do an area problem, how are you leaving your units? Square units, right? Square units. Look at that. A for area. All right, just a warning. I'm going to get fired up here in a minute to, to show a point. Not, the, not like that's new or anything. All right, let's go. I got two similar figures up here. Give me the ratio of their perimeters and the ratio of their areas. So I want to know what ratio their perimeters are in and what ratio their areas are in. We don't do that unless I know what the ratio of their sides are in. All right, don't make this complicated. I've given you two sides already that correspond. So what is the ratio of their sides? What is the ratio of their side? Don't make it complicated. I gave you both sides up here. What's the ratio of their sides up here? Boom, Olivia. Just take the two sides. What do you got? Four over? That's it. Yeah, that's it. It's four fifths. Four to five. Four matches up with five. So S1 over S2 is equal to four fifths. Four to five. It's there in a ratio of four to five. All right, now let's answer the question in the problem. First one. What's the ratio of the perimeters? Olivia just gave everyone the side ratio. So what's the ratio of my perimeters then? Boom, Zeev. Also four fifths. Now here's where I'm gonna go crazy because I wanna make sure you understand what this means. It does not mean, it does not mean the perimeter of this one is four and the perimeter of that one is five. That doesn't make sense anyway. Right? It does not find perimeters. It finds the ratio they're in. So for example, if I did have you find the perimeter of the smaller one and the perimeter over the bigger one, you'd put them right on top of each other, divide them in your calculators, and be a ratio of four-fifths. So make sure you understand that. I am not finding the actual perimeter. What I'm showing you guys is if we knew what the perimeters were, put the smaller one over the bigger one, it reduced down to five fourths, four fifths. That's what this means. Okay, so you're not actually finding what the perimeters are. What about the areas? What about the areas now? What's A1 over A2 based on what we've wrote, written in words and notation now? How do you find that ratio of their areas? Whew, kissing you, what do I have to do here? There you go, four squared over five squared. And actually figure out what it is, right? So the ratio of their perimeter or their areas is 16 over 25. Again, again, I'm not saying this area is 16 and that area is 25. I'm just saying whatever the actual areas are, put them over each other, it's gonna reduce down to 16 over 25. Questions with that basic one? All right, well, this is kind of basic, but you got to just one little catch here. Uh, what is the side ratio here? You guys got to figure out where that three is going to match up with, right? Five or eight. Put the congruent sides on top of each other. All right, put up the congruent sides on top of each other. Because I need to know what S1 over S2 is before I find any other ratio. I got to know what that is before I find any other ratio. All right, so what is the ratio of two of the sides here? What do you got for this one here? Olivia, back to you. Come on now. Nice job. Three, and the three does match up with the five instead of the eight. There you go. All right, let me go back to you guys now. What about the perimeters? The perimeters are in a ratio of... Kissing you, back to you. Three to five. Again, those aren't the perimeters. It's just the ratio of whatever they are. And yeah, how about the areas? What's the ratio of their areas now? Areas, there we go, going deep, Gabby. Nine over Good, three squared over five squared. Nine over 25. All good? I have to go. Oh, I was gonna, what, is this what are you doing? <laughs> All right. Behave this weekend. Got me? Yeah. All right. Nothing stronger than ginger ale. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's go backwards now. Good. I have to find somewhere to put that. Yeah. Take a look at what I look at all day. There. All right. Look at those bugs. All right. Next up. Can you go backwards now? What if you know what the ratio of the areas are, but I want the side ratio instead? Can you go backwards for me? 
So now I'm telling you, hey, I got two hexagons that are similar. Here are their areas. One area is eight and the other area is 32. What must have been, what ratio must their sides have been in? Oh, how do I go? Remember, to get here, to get here, I squared it, didn't I? So how do I go back now? All right, how do I go back to the side? I got there by squaring the sides. So how do I put the uh, car in reverse and uh, go backwards and get the sides? Oh, well, suggestion. And then still do, I'm going to get what? One to four, but that's not the side ratio. They're not equal to each other. What do I got to do? Square root. I, now I can even buy step, bypass your first step. I can take the square root right now. All right. Yes, you can simplify it, but I don't need to. And here's why. Because you got these calculators that wipe your nose for you. All right. And it will do everything. So right in, and this is the fourth time I've done this. And I've learned that you have to plug this in in one full step in your calculator. You can't do like radical eight equals radical 32 equals then divide. You got to do this all in one full step. Radical eight on top, radical 32 in the denominator. And my similarity ratio here, Matt, when you're ready. Uh, one over two. One over two, yep. So one side is double the uh, other side in the other hexagon, just by knowing that the two areas. All right, let's do it again, but now for circles. And I do have a comment here at the end. I don't know if anybody's thinking this or not, but I just want to comment on the answer at the end. Again, giving you the areas. If you want to leave the pies out, that's fine because they're going to cancel. Take the square root to get to the similarity ratio. Gianna, when you have that ratio, let me know. Eight over, three. Eight over three. Good job. Let me just make a quick comment before we get to the last problem. I've been saying pretty much all class that S1 over S2 is the ratio of two corresponding sides, right? But now we're dealing with a circle. So how does that make sense, right? Because a circle doesn't have sides. It doesn't have to be sides. It can be anything that can be measured. Like it could be... Stop, just stop right now. It could be the radii are in a ratio of three to eight. They're diameters, they're chords, anything that can be measured in a figure. That's what S1 over S2 is, all right? So it's not necessarily sides, even though most of the time we talk about sides, it could be anything that's measured, okay? All right, one more, and this is where I need you to be. Using these ratios to actually find what the actual area is. All right, using the ratios to find an actual area. So in this problem, we got two similar rectangles. A little Regents review here. Uh, anybody remember the symbol for similar? Hasn't been that long, has it? As everyone hand draws it in the air. It's the tilde. Tilde, way to use your big boy word there. Good, tilde, yes. They're similar to each other. Uh, it's telling me the shorter side of one of them, six feet. And the similar or the corresponding shorter side in the other rectangle is nine feet. All right, we got that down. The area of the smaller one, 48 square feet. And what's the area in the big dog? What's the area there? I don't want you to use length times width either. Stop. Don't. I don't want you to use area formula. No. I want you to use what we've learned today. What's the ratio of their sides? Right, we know that. We know the ratio of their sides is. Shoo, Matt, you're on fire today, boss. Yeah, six over nine. Is it okay if you ever ended up reducing that? Yeah, that's fine. No big deal. And we know the areas. So let's see how much I've taught you today. So I Matt gave me the side ratio. I'll set that equal to, all right, 48 belongs with the six because it's in the smaller rectangle. And we're trying to find the area where the side is not. If you start cross multiplying that, I didn't do my job today. Because if you start cross multiplying right now, here is what you are telling me. The 
that's true. That's exactly what I set up. Sides equals area. You know that's false. We wrote this in words and in notation. Adjust this for me so I can cross multiply. We're not ready to cross multiply. This is not correct. Correct it for me so I can cross multiply. What's got to be uh, added on here? Doyle? Yes, thank you. The sides need to be squared before they're equal to the area ratio. Please be aware of that. Never cross multiply sides in the area just equal. They got to be squared. Now you can do a little woo cross multiplication. Got to square the areas, uh, sides. Got to square the sides first. And then when you have the area of the bigger rectangle, let me know. Aiden, run us into the weekend. What do you got? You're going to leave that thing naked? Thank you. Okay. You play your cards right. You could get out of here with nothing this weekend. All right.